we castrated a bull and there was a cow headed to I was in the How's it going and welcome back to another video. I've just finished my first week of carving placement and at the moment I am currently doing placement in the South Island of New Zealand in Canterbury. I'm here for two weeks, I'm actually staying with my parents and I thought I would fill you in and kind of give you a breakdown of what I've done, give you some examples of what you might run into if you have to do carving placement in your future at vet school and some of the things that I've learned that might help you out. If you like this video, I have another whole week of carving next week for this video I'm going to assume that you guys know stuff about carving. I'm also going to be talking about some pretty brutal and gruesome things in this video. So just a warning um, if you don't want to hear about dead calves or things being cut up or dead, just dead things in general, don't watch this video. On Monday I arrived at the clinic and I got inducted by one of the vets so they talked me through all the health and safety stuff and then I got assigned a little desk in the office which was really cute and they were like well you can just sit here and do work until a carving comes in if you want and I was like great that sounds awesome. I don't have any work to do. So that is my biggest tip, is that if you are going on placement, bring some work to do with you. Bring some study notes, bring your laptop, because otherwise you might get extremely bored because that's what I did on my first day. The first thing that I did on Monday was actually not a carving at all. We castrated a bull, taking off his balls. I went out with one of the senior vets and there was also another younger vet who just started at the practice. Got a bull into this crush. We gave him 10% xylazine. Xylazine is a sedative that we use in large animals in New Zealand. We ended up giving him 4.5 mils, which is a lot more than it should take to get a bull down to the ground. He just was resisting the xylazine so, so much. It was my first case out, so I was just kind of standing watching. While we were out, actually, the vet that I was with, he said, that's exciting, today is my four year anniversary. And me and the younger vet were like, four year anniversary? And he was like, yeah, four years ago today, I was carving a cow, got out of the crush and completely ran him over and he broke pretty much every bone in both of his legs and tore his meniscus and his ACL and absolutely everything. But um, yeah. That afternoon I got called out to a carving which, so I went out with again the younger new grad vet and I also went out with another a different more experienced vet and the first carving that we had was what we call a breech. So a normal calf comes out head first with its legs forward. This calf was breached so it was coming butt first. Its legs were forward and it was also upside down <laughs> so it was completely the wrong way round. It was dead and we tried to pull it out and it ended up not working so the way we ended up getting it out is we used a feeder tome and we did a phytotomy. The only way we could get it out was by cutting it out and by doing that we could pull out the calf. There was also another carving at that f exact same farm so straight after that carving we moved to the next one. The second calf had its head back but its legs were forward and the cervix was not dilated properly so it was really squished in there. I got to place the leg ropes and give an epidural which was really cool and we put a rope around the head and we got it out and the calf was alive which was really exciting. That was my first day in clinic. The second day, which was Tuesday, I spent pretty much the whole time in the small animal hospital. There was no carvings that got called in on Tuesday. In the morning, I got to do a cat castrate. I got to do a lot of a bitch spay, ovi ovario hysterectomy. And she also let me stitch it up, but I really need to practice, practice my suturing because it didn't go <laughs> that well. And after lunch, there was a call that came in to go out and see a mob of cows with pink eye. It can be conjunctivitis or dry eye, keratoconjunctivitis sicca. Predominantly, what, most of them had one eye affected and they were all like squinty and weepy and they looked really red and sore. There are multiple different causes of pink eye in cows. Dust, it can be flies, flies flying around and causing issues, seeds and weeds getting into their eyes when they're 
phrasing, bacterial infection. We kind of figured it out that it was most likely dust because the farmer said that their farm had been really, really dusty the past week. There was also this cow with a wonky face. We figured out it was most likely lumpy jaw. On Wednesday, I went to a carving talk down south and I learned lots and lots about carving. On Thursday, I was in the small animal hospital again in the morning. I did a dental on a seven year old dog, which means I scaled and polished the dog's teeth. And I also got to remove some teeth, which was really cool. I've never had the opportunity to pull teeth before. On that afternoon, there was a carving, it was a beef heifer. They let me do the epidural, which was really cool. Again, the calf was breached, so it was backwards, but it had its feet up. I got to attach some ropes and we ended up pulling it out. But unfortunately, the cow went down halfway through pulling. So we ended up having to continue pulling while the cow was down. The calf came out eventually, but unfortunately the calf was dead. The next morning, which is Friday, this day was a whole day of carvings. This is actually yesterday for me. So I went out at 8 a.m. as soon as I arrived in the practice they told me there was a carving and there was a cow that had a calf that was breached. It was very very difficult to reach. I could barely even feel it. It took about an hour but she did it without having to use the feet at home which is amazing. Flicked both legs out and then they used a carving jack which is a device I've actually never seen before to get the calf out. I went out to another carving with a different vet so I got back to the clinic at about 10 and then at 11 the next carving call came in. And so there was a cow with a calf that was a head back. We both tried really, really hard to get the head forward and we just could not do it. It was almost impossible. We figured out that the calf was dead and we ended up having to use the feeder tone to um, remove the calf's head to get the calf out. So I got to be really, really involved in this calving. I got to pull, I got to place ropes, I got to use the feeder tone. Yesterday afternoon, I don't have this written down, but I got to do another calving. I went out with two vets that time and it was actually a really really simple carving. It was backwards but it had one leg forward and one leg back. All we needed to do was flick that other leg forward and once we did that the cow pretty much pushed out the calf by itself. Unfortunately the calf was dead. Yeah so I got to see one live calf carving this past week and I also got to do quite a lot of small animal stuff which was really cool and fun for me. I hope you found this video helpful or interesting. If you want me to give you more information, more details, I'm happy to do it at the end of my carving placement next week. I just thought it'd be interesting to fill you guys in on what has happened over the past five days. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.